technology. technology. Progress is so fast, man. It's kind of crazy. We went from this to this in 40 years. And with AI on the uprise, it seems like there's no slowing down. So I was thinking it'd be cool to reminisce a little, you know, get a bit nostalgic maybe, and talk about how technology changed our lives forever. It's circa 1995 and my dad brought home a first computer or at least like a computational device of some sorts. So I remember there was like a keyboard and like a thing for the cassettes where you would put the cassette in, you would rewind it and then press play and somehow something, because it was connected to a TV, something was happening on the screen. To this day, it blows my mind that something like that even works. Do you remember listening to music on cassette tapes and sometimes the tape would get like out of the cassette and you would have to take a pen or something and wind it back in? Or like rewinding the cassettes because you wanted to listen to some song again? Oh man, there was a lot of rewinding back then. And the TVs were so big. Look, I'm not my father. I don't do kung fu. I'm a cop. That's who I am. That's what I do. But we had no remote control with the first TV we had. And I remember that because I was the remote controller. We would be sitting on the couch and if my parents wanted to change the channel, I would have to get up and walk to the TV and change the channel physically on a button. Yeah, that's how old I am. We got the first computer, like a desktop computer kind of early, I think, because this was somewhere at the beginning when people were like slowly getting PCs at home. So I remember that it was just me and one other guy in my class that had a desktop PC at home, you know? So we would just switch CDs and like share whatever games we had at the time. But that didn't last too long because the boom came and then suddenly almost everybody had a PC at home. And for a big part of my childhood, I've been using floppy disks. What is a floppy disk, you might ask, if you've been born in the new millennia. Well, my young child, a floppy disk is like a flash drive, but just bigger and plasticky and can carry maybe one song. But back then, it was the power to store your data on the go. And it also sounded like R2D2 when you stick it in the computer. And what about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? Sure. I still remember to this day going to internet cafes, which was for me back then the only way to connect to the internet before we got internet at home and illegally download all the Pokemon pictures. Or not illegally, they just didn't want you to put any floppy disk or whatever in the computers at the internet cafes. But I was a rebel, so I hid in the corner of the cafe and silently put the floppy disk into the computer, download all the Pokemon pictures and then hoped that nobody would hear this insane noise that the floppy disk drive made when it was writing data onto the floppy disk itself. I had CDs at the time, but floppy disks for me were like an immediate way to store data on a device and just move it around, you know? If you want to go from the internet cafe where you store all the Pokemon pictures and bring them home, then floppy disk was the way to go. And internet speeds, oh my god, they were so slow. Internet was insanely slow. It took hours and hours and hours hours to download a movie illegally once again. Once we got internet at home, it was a game changer. This woman who will call Jamie is an addict. Her drug of choice, the internet. By this time, most kids already had computer at home. So we would in the evening hang out together in chat rooms. Do you remember chat rooms with different topics? Oh my God, that's a throwback. Today's segment, internet chat rooms. Hello, how are you today? We would go to these chat rooms and mess around talking to random people with random nicknames, you know, and stuff. And there's definitely like a downside to this anonymous way of communication online, the stranger danger, I guess. But it was so much fun. I also had my first phone, which was Samsung R200, I think, which wasn't very common at the time. Most people had like Nokia's or Motorola's or something like that. So I was kind of proud that I had a, like a Samsung phone. Forget about Snake Man, this phone had a full-blown slot machine games on it. No wonder that I like gambling and poker when I grew up. But I don't remember how old I was when I got my phone. I think I was like 12 or 13 maybe but back then texting and calling was very expensive so as kids with no money we developed a ringing technique you would call someone wait for one ring and immediately cancel the call this was our way of saying hey what's up especially if you were dating someone you would just spend hours and hours of doing this back and forth and our parents were probably looking at us like what the f 
are they doing? <laughs> then we moved on to the next new trend, which was instant messaging app on your computer. I know that AOL or something like that was popular in some countries, but we were using ICQ with brand new emojis and games you could play together with your friends like rock, paper, scissors or whatever. We were moving on from remembering our phone numbers to remembering our ICQ numbers. This was a golden era in my time and I'm really glad I grew up in a time where Technology was developing, but we were still hanging out. And because the phones were not that useful yet, we were not paying attention to them that much. We were just chilling outside late after sunset and doing whatever teenagers did back then, you know? I know I sound super old right now, like back in my day, we were not sitting on the phone all the time and we were talking. I don't mean it like that, okay? I'm a nerd, I was always glued to a computer screen any chance I got, but I'm just saying, it was kind of nice. And honestly, I don't really know what's happening with kids nowadays, you know? In my head, they are just sitting on TikTok and not talking to each other, but who knows? Maybe they are hanging outside and doing whatever. When we finally got a TV with a remote, and also, by the way, this is not chronological at all. In my mind, it's all scrambled. This just shows how fast things were happening, but don't take this as like a timeline because I really don't remember how these things were happening. Anyway, as I was saying, when we finally got a TV with a remote, we were using teletext for weather forecast or TV programming or whatever. Maybe this is still a thing, I don't know, I don't own the TV. Teletext was... How do you describe teletext, man? <laughs> so you press the button on the remote and then a wall of text showed up with whatever information. You know, it could be the weather forecast, like I said, or the programming was gonna be on TV. Each page had its own number, so you would remember that 100 is a TV program, 300 is a weather forecast, 301 is like the second page of the weather forecast and stuff like that. And then if you got to a high enough number, you would get to the sexy version of the text with hotlines for hot babes. <laughs> and this is how it looked. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. These were probably like the first sexy pictures I've seen as a kid. Should I blur this? Should I censor this? Is this too hot for YouTube? It's crazy how even talking about this feels so old, man. This was my childhood. These were my memories. All of this was our groundbreaking new technology. When you were listening to a Discman, you know, the device where you put the CD in and close it and then the headphones. And if there were any bumps on the road, you'd be driving and it would just skip because the laser reader would skip ahead. Going on vacation with a Discman, full set of CDs, bunch of books, a Game Boy or whatever just to play games. And nowadays you just have all of that on your phone in this small device. It is crazy to just think about that progress. It's like what's gonna happen, you know, in the next 40 years? If all of this has happened in my 32 years of life, then what's gonna happen down the line? I was thinking about making this video for a very long time and it was now until seeing the Apple Vision Pro or whatever it's called. Think whatever you want about that. But to me, it looks kind of groundbreaking. It really looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. And I think that we have a lot of interesting stuff in the future. And I'm an optimist about these things, you know? There are a lot of people that are like, dystopian about all this stuff like it's gonna be the end of the world blah 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 sky kind of is coming wally sort of life but i don't think so i think we just have to find like a healthy way of living with the technology that we have and maybe we shouldn't give our lives to corporations but that's maybe too deep for this video so i'm gonna cut it thanks for watching i hope you liked the video if you did click the like button and i will see you next time but until then ciao